We have an ongoing solar storm from some fast solar wind that's bringing us some gorgeous aurora. We've got new bright regions emerging on the sun, and one of them not only fired a large class flare, but it also launched a solar storm that's headed straight toward Mars. Those stories and more in the news this week. This space weather forecast is sponsored in part by Millersville University. Come get certified in broadcast space weather. Visit millersville.edu slash swen. Space weather this week is definitely taking off. We've had a lot of activity. In fact, as we take a look at our Earth-facing disk, you can see this big coronal hole in the south, along with kind of an extension that moves up to the equator. That region has been sending us some fast solar wind and has brought aurora down to many parts of the world over the past day or two. And it looks like we're gonna get this storm intensifying as the larger part of this coronal hole rotates in through the Earth strike zone. So we're gonna continue to have more aurora views over the next day or two. But that's not the only story. If you notice, look at all of the bright regions in the south and the bright regions in the north. You've got those two bands building. That is an indicator that solar cycle 25 is picking up because we're getting more active regions emerging on the Earth-facing disk. In fact, we've got a sunspot cluster. This is region 2816. And if you look at the east limb, right on the 17th, you can actually see a bit of wiggle and like whoosh. That is a, a sunspot region that's going to be rotating into Earth view here over the next day or two. And it launched not only a very large flare, but it also launched a solar storm. And it looks like it's headed toward Mars. In fact, as we take a look at our far-sighted sun, this is Stereo A, and it's looking at the sun pretty much from the side. You can see as we get to, uh, again, you can see the, a lot of regions in the south. And as we get to the 17th, whammo, right there, that was the big flare. You can see almost like a little bit of a blast wave coming out. And sure enough, that region region has actually launched a big solar storm and it is definitely Mars directed. So we're going to hang on to our hats as we continue to see these regions rotate into Earth view and it looks like they're going to be boosting the solar flux and it looks like we're going to get a bit more noise when it comes to radio comms for space traffic. Switching to our solar storm prediction model, Enlil, this is NASA's version of the model, and you're looking down at the sun from the North Pole with Earth off to the right and Mars off to the east. In, and in fact, you do see that massive solar storm being launched, and it is absolutely Mars directed. In fact, it is a direct hit for Mars. We're expecting impact to be right on the early part of the 22nd. And if this big solar storm is driving a radiation storm, trust me, those particles are going to get poor ingenuity soon than even this, this big solar storm reaches Mars. And now for your Martian Minute. It's Sol 55 on the Red Planet, where Perseverance rover and Ingenuity helicopter are sitting in Jezero Crater, poised to make that historic first flight on Mars. And luck has been in our path thus far with Ingenuity. In fact, the deployment of Ingenuity went pretty seamlessly. Away from the protection of Mama Perseverance, this little helicopter that could has managed to survive the cold Martian nights multiple times and has even uh, done spin tests to show that its rotor blades are functioning normally. Now, there's been a little bit of a hiccup, and that's just in a mode change to go from a low rotation speed to a high rotation speed with the rotors, but the JPL team is incredibly savvy, and they have, mul they have found multiple ways of getting past this particular hiccup. One has only been changing a few commands and adding a couple extra commands that have already shown that it could successfully work for Ingenuity to get that mode mode change to be successful. The other path is taking a little bit longer because it requires a full software implementation that to, that to upgrade the flight software. And that may be a little bit more of a risk, but hey, having multiple paths to success is definitely the right way to go. In fact, as luck would have it, the atmospheric weather on Mars has also been cooperating with us. As we take a look at the Themis imagery of the dust storms on Mars, you can see things have been dying down, especially in the northern hemisphere, because it is the northern spring. You see a few dust ups near the Meridiani Planum. You also see a little bit going on near Gale Crater in the south. That's where Curiosity is looking at a lot of cirrus clouds in the sky right now. But in Jezero Crater, at the location 
location of perseverance, it looks like things are very calm and are continuing to be uh, exactly that. The weather has been just beautiful for flight. Now, of course, when the weather seems to be beautiful and everything is ready for perseverance and ingenuity's historic event, something has to go wrong, doesn't it? and that is the space weather. Sadly, Mother Nature has conspired to launch a solar storm toward Mars, and we're checking to see whether or not Perseverance and Ingenuity are in for a radiation storm. If that's the case, Perseverance will be just fine, but Ingenuity doesn't have the protection that Mama Perseverance has, so we shall see whether or not JPL and the team are going to assess whether how big of a flight risk this is to Ingenuity. This particular uh, solar storm is expected to hit Mars on the 22nd, and if there is a radiation storm involved, it could be hitting Mars momentarily. So we shall see if this makes any difference to Ingenuity, but we're all going to keep our fingers crossed that everything's in the green. Switching to our moon, we are now coming out of the new moon and passing through the first quarter phase. And by the 22nd, the moon will be about 75% illuminated. So you night sky watchers, if you want to catch those dim objects in the sky, like, I don't know, maybe some aurora, you're going to have this bright companion. So you're going to need to check your local rise and set times. Switching to your solar storm conditions and aurora possibilities over the coming week, we are in the middle of that solar storm from the fast solar wind from that extended coronal hole that's rotating in through the Earth's strike zone. And it does look like that storming is not only going to continue, it may even intensify over the next day or two. At high latitudes, NOAA is expecting minor storm conditions with up to about a 50% chance of a major storm. And this will easily continue throughout this weekend before things calm down. At mid latitudes, we are only expecting unsettled conditions, but we've already seen storm levels multiple times. In fact, we have at least a 15% chance of a minor storm at mid-latitudes, so aurora could continue to penetrate down into mid-latitudes over the next couple days, and possibly even in through the early to midweek before things finally settle down for us. But then even after that, we have another small coronal hole that may be giving us another burst of fast solar wind. And we have that bright region that's probably going to be a sunspot rotating into Earth view over the next couple days. And it's already uh, launched that big solar storm toward Mars. So it could be a solar storm producer, which brings us again more chances for Aurora. Switching to our solar flare and particle radiation storm outlook over the coming week, everything continues to be in the green when it comes to big solar flares. Right now, we only have region 2816, that's a sunspot uh, cluster on the Earth-facing disk, and it is giving us about a 20% chance for C-class flares over the next couple days. But we may see this M-flare risk rise as the new region rotates into Earth view. It has already let off a large uh, solar flare, definitely look like an M-class to me. We won't be able to tell though until it does rotate into earth view so expect to see some of this green could easily go to yellow and expect a bit of noise on the radio bands if you're an amateur if you're a radio amateur and you gps users well we might finally for the first time in ages see a little bit of degradation in your gps reception on earth's day side but meanwhile just hold off we'll see what we get when it rotates into earth view meanwhile we also are in about the mid 70s for solar flux this does mean we're at the marginal level for radio propagation on Earth's day side. Likely these conditions will continue. We may even boost a little bit. Again, it depends upon what we get when we see this new region rotate into Earth view. But either way, we should at least remain in marginal radio propagation on Earth's day side. So the space weather this week is keeping us on our toes. It's definitely ramping up. In fact, not only do we have an ongoing solar storm right now from that fast solar wind from the big coronal hole that's rotating in through the Earth's strike zone, but that storming is going to continue over the next couple days and continue to bring us some aurora, possibly down to mid latitudes. So you aurora photographers, keep your batteries charged. Now, amateur radio operators and emergency responders, with all these new bright regions, we are boosting that solar flux. We could even see it climb into the low 80s here over the next few days if this new region that's going to be rotating into earth view ends up being still the big uh, player that it looks like it could be and on top of that we are beginning to see radio bursts again so if you're hearing some noise on the bands that's simply because the sun is beginning to wake up and start talking so remember what that sounds like boy it's been a while huh meanwhile 
Uh, if this region rotates into Earth view, we could start seeing that M flare risk rise. So just be aware of that on Earth's day side. And then finally, wow, poor little Ingenuity helicopter. I mean, it's literally on the cusp of taking its historic flight. But just as we get new software changes and everything and, and squared away and it's all ready to go, we think and we're all so, so excited about it. What happens? Mother Nature decides to play a prank and launch a solar storm. So let's hope there's no radiation storm that's associated with this one so Ingenuity can take its historic first flight right on time. I'm Tamitha Scove, the Space Weather Woman. Thank you for watching.